A one, a two, a three. Romeo, oh Romeo, where art, where thou art, where the fuck are you, Romeo? My name is Sir Tyler Lord, but fucking Hamilton, and I am the narrator. Yes. Sir Tyler, Lord, but fucking Hamilton, I am the narrator. I didn't want to be the narrator. Mm, I wanted to be one of the actors. You know, prime time. But no. Paul over there, hot shot. He's a slick shit. <laughs> Lead singer for crying for Kafka. Kafka being his band derivative of turn of the century philosopher, go look it up when you get home online. And everything that he created as far as his material comes from his childhood. And this is what we ended up having. Great actors. So I said, Paul, what the fuck? Is the fucking of a goddamn fucking piece of shit fucking fuck up society and it's a fucked up audience coming over to the show to hear a fucked up of a goddamn fucking piece of shit fucking script of your fucking life and I want to be one of the fucking of a goddamn fucking piece of shit fucking actors and he says Sir Tyler Lord Hamilton you have a great voice the audiences will love you and I says alright he says you got to be the narrator I says why because you can explain. Ah, so here I am to explain. <clears throat> <clears throat> explain, 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 explain. Well, I'll explain some of my own culture of narcissism about being your narrator. Being the narrator, it's pretty heavy stuff on the voice. <clears throat> Does anybody have maybe a uh, an extra beer, Jack Daniels, something to toke on. So, bring it on, any time. Always appreciate it. <laughs> what I'm about to tell you, before we begin, is really important. Every character actor in this staged play, stage musical, has multiple roles. And let me give you a case in point. Example. A dude plays a dude. Next scene, he plays a chick with a dick. Yeah. Totally gender fuck. This script is amazing. It's totally sociopolitically correct because of gender politics and gender bliss and gender creative and protecting all the rights for all the queer kids in the classrooms. You're going to love it. But remember that fight that you heard on the loudspeakers before I began my psychobabble? Well, that was very true. It was Frank's father, real life. And abracadabra. Pay special attention to this point I am making. Every fucking word in this fucking story is fucking true. None of it is false. No actor Hollywood bullshit. Got it? All right. Scene one. Here it goes. Frank, age 15, underage. And that's not the only underage bullshit piece of fucking other goddamn fucking piece of shit fucking detail in this fucking musical. Underage. It reoccurs. If you have a hard time dealing with that, I'm here to hold your hand. I'll walk through this with you. 
You don't need to walk out. So, Frank. He basically has his spleen splattered. Blood's dripping out of his mouth. He fucking comes in, wailing on the kitchen floor. His fucking mother, nice Christian woman, sees everything through rose-colored glasses. She's a cupcake mom. She's fucking freaked. She doesn't know what to do. And Frank's old man, hey, he doesn't hear a thing. He's on the f horn with the fucking of a goddamn fucking piece of shit fucking hooker. Yeah, underneath the same roof over all this drama. So finally when he does hear something, because he's closing the deal with the bitch, right? You know. Look. He's pissed. Absolutely fucking pissed. Hit it, Frank. One, two, three. I am telling you, again and again and again, everything in this story is absolutely true. I, I you know, I, I just don't get that. I mean, look at, look at how you. And none of these and things. That, and, and that stuff couldn't really have happened. Come on, oh, it got, it got oh. amped up for us. Well, it can't be true. But when it gets to me, I'm the Walt Disney of it. That's all it is. I don't, I don't understand that. It's, it's, it's the make believe. But the reality is, the reality is, is none of these fucking events are false. They're all true. So, so you want us to... This is a to... true story. Okay. So you want us to believe it and then do something with it? What, what do you want from us? This will be a direct cultural impact on each person's life, okay? Everybody is going to be able to, to draw something from this experience and consider their social responsibilities and their social justice. You know the drill. Okay. You know, okay. it's, it's all in the news. So we're going into scene two, okay? okay? This is where it really gets interesting. Trudy, okay, is a gender-bending dude. Total gender fuck. The, for real? Uh, yes, 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 yes. Okay. But we're reenacting it, though. You understand? This is the theater. Okay. It'll be okay. I'm trusting you here. Yeah, as the story comes into fruition, you'll get it more. Okay. Okay. So basically, she is bearing a very striking resemblance to Frank. Uh -huh. This is the hint. Frank and Trudy are one and the same. Again, it, it will make itself clear as we go on. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So, Trudy, she is playing a blind lesbian LA Times reporter. Is that fabulous? A gender-bending blind lesbian LA Times. Yes! Writer. Yeah! Got it. Okay. Yeah, um, right. yeah. Right. shocking, but it's, it's real. All right. So she is calling her copy editor in Los Angeles, and her name is Jen. Okay. Jen has this sensation about this, okay? Holy digs, Trudy, and Trudy digs Jen. Okay, watch. A one, a two, a three. Ah, yes! <laughs> scene three. Ah, yes. And this scene features the infamous, the saint, Dr. Matthews, and his girlfriend, Keely. <laughs> What I find to be very fascinating about this scene is that basically Keely is having a really hard time not knowing how to figure out the personality and the social psychology of the saint. Here we have this guy, yeah? He wants to change the world. Abracadabra. You know, basically stand up for the fucked up. Yeah? Very charity. Oh, very new philanthropy, the liberty movement. You know, never having a generation like this before that's enslaved to one another. Volunteer this, volunteer that, and he has the hook. He's giving, 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 giving. However, he's scared shitless of love. She can't figure it out. It does not add up. 
I particularly feel, probably like you do, it's an intimacy problem. A one, a two, a three. All right, here we go, audience. Ha ha ha. Scene four. Yeah? Ha 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 ha. With little boy Frank in his Christian family. Yeah? In this scene, he's having what? Dinner with his parents, Mr. Ballistic and Cupcake Mom. What a fucked up forum. A one. A two, a three. Ah, oh, yes, <laughs> abracadabra. Ah, oh, it's scene five. Yeah, this is where Jen and Trudy are dialoguing. Yeah, I'm telling you this. You've got to remember, every single thing in this story is true. Ah. Ah, yes. To break some of that tension, excuse me, what we have here is... Is it Jen or Trudy? Or Trudy or Jen? Ah, yes. This is what we will have. We will have Jen create a little bit of her flirting on Trudy. This will break that tension, but... After the flirting, <laughs> it's back to the goddamn gruesome story. Enjoy. A one, a two, a three. Oh, I love, I love you. Oh, scene seven. Ah, again, we have the uh, little baby Frank and his girlfriend, Chloe. They're really in a lot of heavy shit and it has to do with their fucked up parents, you know? Fucking twisted. They're goddamn fucking holy rollers. And in no time, they're gonna be pulling out snakes. You're right, yes. Yes. A one. A two. A three. Trudy. Well, and Jen. <laughs> hey, scene eight. Trudy pulls no punches. Ah, and in the scene, remember, I tell you everything is true about Trudy and what he's explored, as well as Jen. Keep an eye on Jen. Whoa, she'll be riding that porcelain bus. Ah. <laughs> A one, a two, a three. Fucking goddamn fucking piece Christian Dior. Shit. A whore gave this to me, and she said, I love you. Love? Oh my god. I often feel that my need and my search for love is much greater than love itself. Really. I mean, I think I'm trying to look for love where love can't be found. I love in vanity for my lipstick. Yeah, we all love in vanity. We give out of what we need. We give out of what we don't have. And we expect to be loved because we're pieces of shit. Scene 9. The Saint in Keeley. A one, a two, a three. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes! It's scene ten. And it's dealing with little Frank and little Chloe. I tell you, God, the shit that they have to deal with. I, I don't think any kid should have to fucking deal with this shit. Yeah? Is there anybody in the audience that had to deal with this shit ever? Yes. I know, it sucks, doesn't it? I, 
Oh, yes, you want some breast milk. Mm -hmm. I know, baby, I wish I could be your mommy, but I can't. So be a big girl and pull up your cup and move on, right? I feel for you and my heart goes out to you, bitch. Right. Scene 11. Smell me. A one, a two, swarm. a three. Where's my sl There they are, my earrings from Swarovski. Gotta be a good little bitch. Anyways, scene 11 is going to introduce a little dialogue on why the saint keeps popping up, and that dialogue is conducted by Trudy. And very fascinating. What I think to be interesting in this very sadistic story, if you don't mind me saying, is the, um, the fucked up karma. Yeah? Fucked up karma. And uh, the things you're going to be hearing are amazing. Because um, the, uh, the fucking police department, fucking pedo police department, fucking sick. Scene 11. A one. A two. A three. <laughs> hey, everybody! Oh, I love you. Scene 13! Yeah! And it's where Frank and his old man are standing in front of the loser liquor store called Commuters Liquors. Yeah! <laughs> And in this scene, there's a lot of good-looking babes. That's right, vagina. Yeah, yeah, Ooh, uh, hubba, 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 going in that place. But you need to keep a special eye on the homeless guy. He is a fucking philosopher. I love him. Love him, love him, love him, love him, love him! A one, a two, a three. La, 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 the saint of fucked up karma. Right now, I am in the bathroom of Frank's. And this is where he paints when he's bored. And in between his painting, he really looks forward to his holidays, his birthday, his Halloween, and he loves talking about his life. And in scene 15, well, I guess really in every major play and every major actor, regardless of the small size of a bathroom and echoing as you're singing, it's all about you. And he has a monologue to present. I know. What a yawner. It's kind of like a band. You know, when a band is finished, right? You know it's not entirely done because they have to play their big hits. So basically, this is the opportunity for Frank, and he's basically walking in a half dream. Enjoy his monologue. La la la. A one, a two, a three. I said no. I don't want to do the fucking scene. My makeup is smearing and everything like that. I feel like I need to do some some maxi pads, some shopping. But first, listen. I I told you I don't want to do that scene. Uh, I, I just don't want to be seen right now by the public. Okay, okay, I'll do the scene. You think I understand the saint and Keely? Nah, I don't understand it, and neither do you. So uh, the, the, the fucking battle I had to deal with to be beautiful, to always be on. All right, the saint and Keely, yes, scene... Oh, God, I've been smoking a lot of marijuana. Sixteen! <laughs> Thank you, public! Sixteen, son of a bitch! A one. 
a two, a three. Oh, I love smoking with Sharon Osborne. Rumba, 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 Sharon Osborne. Oh yes, abracadabra. Scene seventeen. Let's hear it for Frank and Chloe. Yes. Oh, hubba, hubba, hubba. Anyways, in this scene, I want everybody to pay special attention, oh yeah, uh, to the necklace. Yeah. Believe it or not, this is the clue for the musical! Let's hear it! Yeah! A one, a two, a three. The end! Yeah? It's about time, isn't it? No hallmark moment. No Hollywood bullshit. So? Out of all the trauma, all the corruption in the police department, I said all the drama and all the goddamn fucking corruption in the fucking police department. Fuck masculinity, right? It's the ultimate feminization of masculinity and gender politics. Fuck being a man, yeah? Fuck it all. I mind fucked like you. And you know what? I'm ready for fucking gender politics. Yeah? I want to know what it means to be having to fucking narrate this goddamn fucking bullshit. Fucking other piece of goddamn fucking narration role, and I fucking wanted to be one of the fucking actors. Listen up. <laughs> I had to fucking cry with the shit. Yeah! Fucking me. I had to fucking cry during the goddamn fucking of a piece of fucked up rehearsal. Don't you be knocking those fucking hookers. They mean well. I had a neighbor one time and she says if you drive me to flip the dill, turn over a trick, I'll give you some Chanel. I gave her. I gave her, her her ride. And she gave me my fucking Chanel. And guess who her client was? Huh? Fucking cop. I want everybody to remember one thing. That if you can't give it up to fucking the Saint and Keeley, you got a problem. Let's give it up to the fucking Satan Keeley. Aren't they wonderful?